When you think of the Hulk, you probably think of the iconic superhero, Bruce Banner, Lou Ferrigno. But when I think of the Hulk, I think of someone a bit different, <laughs> who is actually our guest here today. Stay tuned to find out who this Hulk is that I'm talking about. My name is Christian Bandera. I'll be your host this evening. And across from me is Vinito Santos. What's up, man? What's going on? How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. We're, we're, uh, we're freezing our asses over here. Yeah. The it's snow. a good snowy day. It's, it's a snowy day. I don't know if, about, if it's good. Well, everyone's resting and we're here grinding. That so is true. That's you got all a point. That's important. That is, yeah, that, that is true. You got a point. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Would you like to introduce our guest? Oh, man. I mean, you already brought up the Hulk, right? And they'll probably understand once they start seeing some highlights as to why you're referring to him as the Hulk, because he had the craziest knockout on the Ultimate Fighter. So, I mean, the man himself, Rico. And what was your last name again? DeShulo. DeShulo. Rico DeShulo. Bro, I'm excited for this one. Thanks for coming on, bro. Yeah, no worries. I appreciate it. You guys having me. Thank you. Thank you. So what we like to do, Rico, with every guest that we have on, we like to get their origin story because we might know you relatively well, but the audience might not. So what we would like to do is get your backstory, where you grew up, and uh, your upbringing, how you got into MMA, and then we'll just usually just take it from there, and then we'll get into more some more stuff. All right. Uh, let me see where it all began, huh? Um, so I grew up in Peabody, Mass., not too far from here, right? And uh, I still actually live there now. Um, just grew up pretty much at, pretty average. Had an awesome, like, neighborhood, bunch of kids just, you know, being knuckleheads, you know what I mean? Always getting into trouble a little bit, but not too, too much trouble. I, I tried anyway. <laughs> but no, nah, you know, um, well, always into crazy, like, sports. So, like, my mom, God bless her would like have to literally drive me from like AAU to this, to that, whatever. Every, anything I really wanted to get into, she was cool with, you know what I mean, for the most part. Probably wanted me to burn that energy out, you know, in, in the mm -hmm. sports, which, you know, was a big help. You know, and then I got into karate. So like as a kid, I was crazy into like Ninja Turtles, man. I thought I was one. I'm not even joking. I was like, I was like <laughs> crazy into Ninja Turtles. Which one would you have been? Oh, uh, man, I mean, I would have liked to have been Leonardo, but everybody told me I would have been Raph. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can see that. But, um... Yeah, so, like, I started doing karate at, like, six, so I was even, like, into, I like, did, like, size and everything, and, you know, but I did, like, you know, got pretty high level with, like, you know, just straight karate, which I feel like was actually a really good base as I got into MMA for, like, range control that people don't really understand, but, um, yeah, so I got into karate, loved it, stuck with it, kind of got progressed to the point where, like, they would give, put me with, like, older kids to spar and stuff, because I was really... I was into it, you know what I mean? I thought I was a ninja, like I said, dude. I, mm -hmm. I, I, was, I wanted to be a fighter before I even knew how I could be a fighter, you know what I mean? So, you know, started with karate. Ended up, as I got into, like, a little bit older, started doing more, you know, traditional, like, sports, whatever, baseball, basketball, football. Um, play, played lacrosse in high school, loved lacrosse. Lacrosse was awesome. It's, like, the best of everything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, it was a little more physical, which I liked, you know what I mean? I liked the physical sports. Um, basketball started getting annoying to me, you know what I mean? Because it was just like people flopping, blah, blah, blah. Right. Lacrosse is where it's at, you know what I mean? So then I moved from, after high school, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, 100% go to college, or if I was going to, you know, work. I have a family business, so we have like a cleaning business. So I wasn't sure if I was going to do that. So I moved to Somerville, figuring it out, getting close to my work, because we were, um, were based out of Everett over there, and mm -hmm. so I was right in Somerville. And I went for a run one day, man. I went for, um, and I ran into Sitya Tong, Boston, which is like literally one of the best Muay Thai gyms on the planet. You know what I mean? It was right here next to my house, and I didn't even know. And uh, I literally was going for a run. Back then, they didn't have two floors. It was just in this basement. It was like, this was, we're talking about 2007, 2008. Um, it was a fucking awesome, like, dungeon gym, like a real gym. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this was back when, like, MMA was still, like, super new. So, like, guys didn't, weren't even, you know, we were just starting to learn how to do MMA, like, how to train it, who's coming. Like, we have people coming from all over to go there to train, so you know, because it was such a staple, you know what I mean? So, like, all the best and all the biggest, like, names in anywhere in, like, New England were pretty much traveling to sit your tongue to spar, and you know, because it it's a fighter's gym, you know, especially at that time. It was, you know, a lot of just, like, high-level killers, you know, really good teaching. Crew Mark Delagrati, you know, owns it over there. He's, uh, you know, a staple in New England with, with martial arts. And he's, you know, learned a lot through his trip over in Thailand when, you know, that's where he, his whole background is, you know, Muay Thai for the most part. But he's a he's a martial artist through and through with everything. Mm -hmm. So I started, you know, over there, 
training in Muay Thai specifically, got into a little bit of jiu-jitsu over there, but mostly Muay Thai. And they had a smoker one day, and I, you know, absolutely knocked somebody almost asleep, dude. They had a, you know, <laughs> and they were like, all right, you ready? To, you want to actually fight? Like, because now this is when, like, amateur MMA is getting big, and it just started. You know, we actually couldn't even fight Muay Thai in Massachusetts, so a lot of our guys would have to go to New York for whatever reason. MMA was legal, but Muay Thai was illegal, so we're a Muay Thai gym for the most part. Mm. So, like, a lot of our guys were going to New York and other places to train. But I want to do MMA because, like, I want to do everything. You know what I mean? I wanted to be able to knee, kick, punch, everything, mm. you know, grapple. I, I really like the wrestling aspect of it. You know, I grew up wrestling with my boy Charles Rosen, a bunch of goons over at Rhonda's, my, my, my buddy Steve's house, <laughs> which yeah. his mom was Rhonda. And, she, like, like I said, not too far from where I grew up. And every single day, you know, we... My actually Charles's older brother Vincent, who, who actually passed passed away when we were kids, rest in peace. But uh, I'll, I'll get into that later too, if you guys want, because uh, his father runs a really really cool charity. It's called Chucky's Fight. Yes, yes, I know that. Yeah, I, I met him. Yeah, so he's the man, and like we grew up together, and you know, shit happens. Kids getting drugs, this or whatever, blah blah. Both of his brothers passed away when we were really young. So we were like still in high school and that was like my best friend, my brother. Oh, because of drugs or? Yeah, one was, one was, it was accidental overdose and then his older brother ended up like, you know, I think because of all the things that happened, you know, mm. started, you know, kind of getting deep into drugs because he probably felt guilty as about his brother or whatever, you know what I mean? It's just hard, you lost a family member, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, so, you know, he, Charles lost both of his brothers and um, from there, you know, things kind of, it, you know, things could have easily spiraled out of control a little bit, but like we were super, super, super tight. You know what I mean? Like, but like I was saying, we used to go back to, to Rhonda's house and, and, and after school and just beat each other up for hours because Vinny and, and Dom would show us like, you know, grappling moves. They would, they were big jujitsu guys and just fight fans. So like they would show it on us and almost have us like chicken fight, like cock fight. You know what I'm That's saying? Funny. Like, you guys want to play Tony Hawk next? Let's see who submits first. <laughs> Get to the back of the line. and <laughs> Stuff like that for real. And, uh, yeah, who, man. Who would win? It all depends. With my buddy Chris Wyman, he actually passed away this, like a year or two ago from battle with cancer. But, dude, he was a little super, super, super scrappy, real, real strong kid at that age. Charles Charles always had, like, an insane, like, skill of not getting choked unconscious. Okay. Like, <laughs> that kid could breathe. That's why he's so good at jiu-jitsu. Some kids are, like, natural grapplers. Like, Charles, when, even when we were younger, like, super strong legs, like, grappling. He was, you know, the thing. And... For me, it was always like striking and movement and stuff. So like, we would either, we would either grapple and then we would locker box. So we'd put on hockey helmets and hockey, and we'd just fucking brawl. So it'd like be like striking and then <laughs> grappling. Dude, we did this like almost every day for like a couple of years. Like literally, probably three times a week. How old were you at that time? Like we were like 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up until like in high school almost. Because then it's just like, dude, what are we doing? Bro? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we did it for a while though. But uh, yeah, so that's you know that's pretty much how I you know kind of got into martial arts, you know, I, like I said, started karate, <clears throat> fell off of that for a little bit as I got older in tra tra you know, traditional sports, and then I, I went for a run when I lived in Somerville and ran into Sit Yo Tong, and the rest is history, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely, Damn. definitely. And so you started training Muay Thai because it was a Muay Thai gym, but you wanted to get more into MMA. When did you really start doing amateur fights? Yeah, so after I trained there for two years, did Muay Thai, and then they, they brought in... Um, some some high level jujitsu coaches, which was awesome. Like my first professors, Giuliano Catino, who are Daniel Gracie black belts in Local Lobo. Those guys are, which is Lee Gresh. They're they're actually they they run um, a lot of the, the the they have a couple schools up in like Hyannis area. They're over by the Cape, so they were coming down because they're all connected with Crew Mark. So you know, those are the, those are my first teachers. The awesome, like awesome guys. Like they're still still doing the damn thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Still teaching. Gresh fought for a long time to like he was in his like fifties, I think. So he fought wow. as well. Damn. Banana fought. You know, um, I think he got um, the CES heavyweight type before he retired. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man. Um, so once they started coming in and then we started mixing with, and we had a lot of guys like that were really, really good. Like one of our buddies from, you know, he, he's he's done fighting now, but was really, really high level um, mixed martial artist was uh, Jimmy Davidson. Really, really, really good wrestler. He was a kid that like really, they used him a lot with Kenny Florian. When Kenny Florian was fighting um, back for the title, like yeah. Jimbo was like a staple in their camp because he's really, really good grappler. You know what I mean? So, you know, training with a lot of just studs over there and then just having so many different, you know, looks of people. Like we had guys like Andreas, Judy, who's like just phenomenal Muay Thai guy. 
you know, we got guys like Jimbo, really good grappler with this or whatever, but he also has been training Muay Thai and all this. So all these guys, all you know, all these different bodies from all these different types of backgrounds that, you know, can blend everything together and make you better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So after like two years of training over there, and I told you about that smoker. Yes. They had a smoker over there, and I knocked some dude out. You know, a buddy of mine. He's actually a, he's a, he's a friend, How, you know, it's in-house smoker, but I felt terrible. But How was that knockout? It was brutal, bro. The kid had to go to the hospital. He had a concussion. Yeah, it was brutal. Was it by knee? No, by no, no. It was, it, no knees. It was just, um, it was almost like... It was like kickboxing because we didn't, you know, what's in house. Okay. We don't want to cut anybody with elbows and knees. Yeah. But you know, it's it's a fight. You know what I mean? It's an in house yeah. fight. And I knocked him out, dude. And it was bad. Like he didn't <laughs> remember where he was. My buddy Jimbo Slice, that kid I was telling you about, how to drive him to the hospital. Dude. <laughs> it's Ooh, like, damn. and he's a really good dude. He was actually I had to go up a weight class. To, his opponent bailed, I guess, or something happened, and I had to take his place or something. So and I didn't really sign up for it. And then I was like, oh yeah. And then from there, they were like, dude, I've been telling you guys I want to fight, but I, you have to go through, you know, training. I've already fought no bullshit like 25, 30 times outside of it. I've had actually fought for money, like set up fights before I even got to the gym. Oh wow! So that was something that was happening kind of. What is this like, like in the street? Yeah, really? like my buddy would set up Kimbo like, Slice type Kimbo of thing. Slice. Yeah, dude, that my buddy uh, uh, Nick Cora set up some like he would bring in some guys, you know, from like different schools, and uh, dude, we, we got paid like pretty decent. Like, what'd you get paid? I I got paid like over a G. What? Uh, yeah. Damn. Uh, like, you know, I was, and I, they gave me some, some bud and some stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for real, they gave me some weed and like, it was like, you know. So he would just set it up with different yeah, guys dude, different so schools and stuff? It was so like, wild, dude. It's, I look back at this, I'm like, we were insane, dude. Like That's awesome. So he hits me up about this, you know, because I was getting in a lot of fights at the time. You know what I mean? I, for whatever reason, like, I go to a party. You know, someone's mad, I'm with someone's girl, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know how that works. Some dude wants to bully you. Right. He hits you. And I fucking, I'm not letting that happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then that would happen a lot. You know what I mean? Especially like, you know how it is with grades and shit. People want to punk the younger kids. And stuff. And I, right, right. The way I was raised, dude, it's we ain't game. letting that shit happen. Right. You know? So like, me and my boys were always getting into brawls because of that shit. But after a while, there was one fight that changed everything. Like a street fight that literally changed completely everything. But I don't know if you guys want me to get into yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Let's get into it. <laughs> Go for it. it. Yeah. But so are these bare knuckled, by the yeah, way? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. No. Completely paper. bare knuckled. Yeah. Just... Well, so I'll go back to the one that I was telling you about. So the way that that kid set it up, he had this kid from other schools, whatever, and from the prep or something. I think it was from St. John's Prep. And uh, so me and my buddy Chris, that kid I was telling you about, that passed away, and Charles and a couple of my buddies were at the mall. So the meet spot was the mall. Everybody meets up the mall. Yeah, we're driving at this time, so we're probably like 16, 17. I remember being a mall rat. Yeah, right. <laughs> Especially at North Shore Mall. Yeah, oh, bro. <laughs> right. So we all meet up over there, and like everybody's in the parking lot waiting. Me and my buddies are inside. We get there early. We're walking around, and this big fucking kid, you know, heavyweight kid, just keeps walking past us, mean mugging, mean mugging. And my boy's Chris is like, "Yo, dude, imagine that's the dude you can have to fight." Blah blah. blah. Like we're kind of like you know laughing about it. And the dude comes up to us after he passes us like six times. He's like, yo, you guys know this kid, Rico DeShulo? I'm like, fuck, bro. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, this is the dude I'm fighting. Damn. I'm like, come on. So I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, you know, he's like, oh, it's you? I'm like, yeah, all right, let's do this. Blah, blah. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. So we all meet up in the front, like in the, the front parking lot where everybody's at. And we drive to like Centennial. Remember when like it was just parking lots? Yeah. It wasn't really built up yet. Yeah. So we all went up there, you know, cars in a circle lit up. Dope bunch of people there, probably like easy 150, 100 people there. Dude. It was huge. It was a bit, it was huge. You know, it's like three different grades together Makes sense. of people. It was like, you know, what else are you doing in high school on a Friday night? You're either going to a party or, I mean, this was just something that kind of been talked about for months. So okay. he like built it. He had people tossing five bucks here, 10 bucks here, five bucks here. So like we both were getting paid for it. So I'm like, dude, this ain't real unless we're getting paid. What was like the, the place fit, like 50 50 or something? What's that? Um, no, like you know, the winner obviously got a little bit more. I think uh, I think I ended up with a little bit over a thousand dollars. He probably got a couple hundred bucks because wow, I yeah. smoked him, but it got gnarly because no like. Shit. So listen to this. It's, it was <laughs> wild, dude. So this did you know we square up and it's like we're across from you know probably about twenty feet, and he puts a fucking mouthpiece in. Now I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, this dude is fucking he's, ready to go. Legit. You know what I mean? He puts a mouthpiece in and they're calling him right hook rivers and all this shit. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. So like I got scared, bro. And it's honestly like and he was he, a heavyweight. Yeah, he's a heavyweight. Like a straight heavyweight. He's probably like six two, you know, like close to two fifty. Big and then you fucking were dude. He was probably like two twenty, two thirty. What were you at the time? I was like a buck forty five, buck fifty. I was but I, listen, dude, I'm fast and scrappy though. Yeah, like, yeah. And this is the thing, that kid. 
<laughs> so I square up with him, and he's swinging at me, and I'm like small, so I have to you know figure my my range to get in, dude. And, it's, and he's swinging wild hooks, and it's woof, woof, and I'm like, dude, if this fucking touches me, You're I'm done. going out, dude. Like no chance. Like one grazed my shoulder, and I just remember being like, dude, if he hits me, I'm out. You know what I mean? So he, so now I'm just timing him. He throws a hook. I actually like get underneath him and kind of knee bump him, like almost like a, you know what I mean? Like, um, I don't know how to describe it. You get deep with your thigh and you bump him so he gets off balance and I hit an angle on him. So I'm like almost behind him and I start fucking uppercutting him, like side uppercutting to the side dude and he fucking, so now I'm like behind him so he's chasing me but I'm hitting the angle every time so he's running into my hooks. Dude, and I, rip, I hit one and he drops to his knee and I just get behind him and fucking keep smoking. He just flat lays out on the pavement, bro. And everybody went bananas, dude. Like it was like dropping the fucking the 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 giant, dude. Just yeah. boom, he collapsed on his knee. Now he's at my level. Yeah. And it's like bang, bang, dude. Just fucking drop, dude. And everybody went nuts, dude. And it was, uh, it was, it was, it was wild, dude. I, first of all, getting there, I was in the seen? back of a fucking truck with three of my boys, laid down, smoking a fucking blunt, like. <laughs> <laughs> Literally in the back bed of a truck, dude. I'm like, what the fuck? I look back at that shit, and I'm like, dude, what the hell are we doing? Did you have, like, prior training before that? It was just I what just, you just did? Dude, we, like I said, we scrapped a lot growing okay, up, man. Yeah. And, like, I think it was more of, like, a pride thing. Like, I just hated, I hated bullies, bro. I hate people okay. bullying people. And I feel like I was always that, like, I don't know, people, you know, maybe it's because the way I was brought up. Like, I was raised, so I lived with my uncle who had Down syndrome. And I just saw how people, like, shit would affect like, him so yeah, much, yeah. like, emotionally. Like, he was my best, like, he's my dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was, like, he's the sweetest dude on the planet. Like, people that have Down syndrome are mostly, like, the kindest, hard yeah. people. Like, you can't, yeah. like, so it's, like, it kills me when you, you say something to him. It ruins his whole day. Like, if he goes to work, he comes back, you know, this person bothered him. Yeah. It, ruin, it can ruin his whole fucking day, you know what I mean? And I just hate that shit. So it's, like, I feel like whenever I see kids getting bullied and shit it's like dude uh-uh that's just i don't know something that triggers me I, like oh something inside me okay. it just drives me fucking nuts right. so it's like yeah. i feel like my boys always come up to me some shit's happening and i'm like the fucking voice of reason for whatever reason because they know i'll throw down that's a you know so that's just how shit you know kind of was growing up but yeah shit. wild man do you, do you still uh know the guy from the heavyweight? Do you no, I fucking now, never or? talked to that dude again, bro. I got <laughs> paid bounce. What am I going to no. talk to him Because I wonder what it's like now. Like, does anybody, like, hit you back up? Like, yo, remember when listen, you I, fucked me up in the parking listen, lot? I, that's happened before. Really? I was in a lot. Dude, I was in a lot of fights. Like, I was in a bar one time, and I just actually got into a fight. Actually, I got a crazy story. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> with my boy Charles Rosa, dude. We were up in fucking Plymouth, up in uh, Rhode Island. We used to go up there because he, he was in Johnson & Wales uh, yeah. for culinary. So him and my boy Maddie P had their own, um, you know, they had their own uh, apartment and whatnot. And we, I used to go to this uh, this club called the Sidebar, fucking years ago before we were of age to drink. But they, I know the bartender he would hook mm -hmm. me up, so I'd pay him and I'd bring some girls up there. We would drink, you know, our boys. We'd have like, you know, be able to party, mm -hmm. not twenty one, like probably nineteen twenty, okay. you know, whatever. Yeah. But um, so I knew the bouncer real good because I, you know, I always every time I show up, give him a couple hundred bucks, lets us right in, blah blah blah. So this dude starts grinding on my girl like. Over the top, over the top, and I'm like, yo, chill, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's funny at first, but now it's getting ridiculous. So now, he's like, he, this dude's fucking start screaming, going nuts, like they're going to jump me. And the dude actually, that I, uh, the bartender guy, that, I, that I, the doorman that I hook up, he stopped him from jumping me. And he was like, nah, dude, you guys want to fight him? You fight him one-on-one, -on -one, do it outside, like straight up, fucking pull, pulls us outside. And, um, you know, the dude comes at this First of all, this dude's so fucking big, bro. He grabbed my shirt to pull me in. I'm in a t-shirt, right? He pulled me and my shirt went, <laughs> ripped right off of my fucking body, dude. Like someone vacuums it, like, shoop, just ripped right off of me, dude. And I just, like I said, I got so scared, dude. And I just started slamming punches with him. He's just charging forward. So I hit him with like four or five punches, like direct, and he fell. And the girls I was with started kicking him and shit. The girls, bro. <laughs> the girls. I swear to God. And then what happens is, the dudes, some his buddies pull up and they fucking run out. 
and then a cop comes on a fucking horse. Because <laughs> I swear to God, uh, this is a true story. I'm Your not movie, bullshit. Though. It's a movie so, scene right now. Because in Rhode Island, they have a lot of cops on horses. Yeah, there, yeah. And this is the winter. So it's snowing out. It's kind of like a day like today. Okay. So there's snow everywhere. I got a fucking no shirt on at this time, bro. <laughs> and now it's turned into a brawl. So all our boys are trying to not let me get jumped. The, yeah. the girls are k- kicking the shit out of the kid, literally. And they had heels on. You know what oh. I mean? How it's like, we're fucking 19 years old, dude. Girls are wearing mini skirts in the snow. We're fucking, you know what I mean? Welcome to New England. Yeah, dude, right? <laughs> and this is, yeah, this is in Providence, Rhode Island. And fucking, so the cop busts through and, and everybody runs, dude. And I'm, I'm on probation at the time. So I'm not even supposed to be in like... You know, I'm not even yeah. supposed to be, be in out of state or be <laughs> drinking or anything. Right. Like, I was yeah. like, I'm yeah. fucking out of here. So me and my boy Charles, so because he kind of got into a scuffle with those boys too. And we fucking run, dude, because he, you know, we don't want to get in trouble. We're underage drink. This we're gonna get in trouble. Once we get talked to, the ideas we're fucked. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So we fucking running, dude, and they're getting chased by a cop, the cop on the fucking horse, bro. <laughs> so now we're hiding behind a fucking dumpster. And I'm sitting there, my hand's fucking broken. So I broke my hand on the kid when I hit him and hit the, when he was on the ground. So I punched him and my hand shattered. I knew it was broken. It was completely shattered, like all fucked up. Damn. So now I'm running around Providence, bro, fucking looking for the cop with my hand shut, no shirt on, behind a dumpster with my boy Charles. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you know how to get back to your fucking place? Well, obviously everybody's gonna go there. Yeah. It's the only place we got. He's like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> We're just running the streets. We see the cop, dude. The cop fucking like on a, you know, either horseback, but at this time, a couple cops on, on in cars were driving by too because, okay. you know, it turned into a brawl. Yeah, right. So like every time, they're easily going to be able to ID me, bro. I'm running the streets with no with fucking no shirt. shirt. Right. I'm like, fuck, dude. I jump out of one spot, dude. I'm running. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. We made it back, dude. We made it back and nobody got in trouble. But damn, dude, I look back at some of the stupid damn. shit we did as kids, dude, and it's like... That's why I know with my son, dude, he ain't getting away with nothing. <laughs> he ain't getting away with nothing, dude. They, he can't fucking, I, please, there's nothing he can do that I haven't done or seen or could smell him doing a mile right. away. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you were his age once. Oh, That's what yeah. my, our parents say. I was your age once. Yeah, it's funny, man, because, like, I was so wild for a couple years, but, like, I really, you know, I, you have to grow up, you know what I mean? And, and shit changes, and, like, I feel like my son was the best thing for me ever, you know? And I wasn't really, like, wasn't 100% planned, you know what I'm saying? But, like, at the time... You know, I was just about to go pro. You know, martial arts really, like, really disciplined me. You know, that was the biggest thing. I think it saved my life, to be honest, with, the, like, what was going on around me and the people around me. Like, martial arts definitely made me a way better person. It definitely got me out of a lot of trouble. And it, honest to God, probably saved my life, to be, to be honest. Because, like, you know, if I wasn't in the gym, all the fucking bullshit, then the people that I was around, you know, I don't know what the hell could have happened. You know what I'm saying? I was in a lot of weird posi- you know, positions. I got knives pulled on me at, at bars and shit and this or whatever. Like, So what's it like now? Like now that you're a pro and whatnot, like, do you still get into those? <sighs> no, I just, I'm not even in that position. You know, you, know, you just don't put yourself in that. Well, I'll go situation. to bars and stuff here and there, but like it's with my friends. This like nothing like that is going to happen when you're, when you're young and everybody's got, you know, wants to flex their muscle, this, that, whatever. Uh, it's, it's different. Like it's scenes like, are different as you get older. You know what I'm saying? Like at yeah. 21 or that age, it's just like everybody's I feel like it's different too when people kind of know you now. So well, that's the thing too. Yes, once like, you stop fighting like, professionally, man, right. no one wants to fuck with you. That well, nah. So it's weird. It's weird. You get a little bit of both. Like, do you go to a, like I'll go to a bar and people like that had fucking like some boxing classes for like six months or like years, and they're like, they want to like, do right? this. I fucking fought him, but oh, yeah. it's like, and they just go on and on and on about it, and then they just keep like. Like you like wrestling you or this or that and just boom. It's like, dude, please, like yeah. fucking Leave holy me alone. shit. I came here to get away from this type of fucking shit. Clear my brain, have a drink, and chill the fuck out. Yeah. I do this every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let me fucking chill. But it is what it is. It's you know. But yeah, like once you get once I got like a little older, you know, got pro and just it's the thing is when I'm training all the time, I'm not hanging around with goons. I'm not hanging around oh. with people that are getting in trouble. You know, so like as I got older and got away from that, it's like I don't even want to be around Put myself in those positions you know what i mean i like what you said um with the two heavyweights that you fought one at the bar and one uh in the street there after the mall or whatever how you were like you were scared i was terrified you, but yeah you, but, so but it brings me back thing. to that thing where it's like can't fight is one thing but won't okay. fight is another yeah thing, see that know? honestly like we t- i talk about this all the time with like you know amateur kids that i'm trying to teach like to for their fights and stuff like you want to be scared like being scared is going to keep you sharp it's gonna keep you honest. Like if you're not, if you're walking in there, the, every time I fought and I wasn't scared, I made a mistake and I didn't give a shit. I was careless. Like as an amateur, I had a couple fights where I'm, I'm gonna mop this dude. I was like, I was so over the yeah. top confident. I made a mistake. I lost that fight. I was like, what the fuck, dude? I could murder this dude a thousand times over. I didn't take it serious. I didn't care. I partied the night before because I wasn't planning on going pro. Mm-hmm. It kind of happened because I was 
Good. you know, I like fighting, so I did an amateur. I was doing it for the boys, have fun, make a couple bucks. We'll have we'll have we'll talk about it at the party. And then and then I got hooked into it. Like I loved it. You know, I'm there every fucking day. And then I'm like, nah, I don't want to come out to the party. I want to be in the gym. And then it just grew on me, like to the point where it's like. And then I started winning after my first, like, f- I think my fifth fight, I fought the number one guy in New England and knocked him out. And it was like, whoa, I just won a title. I just beat the number one guy in all of fucking New England. So they're like, what, like, what are we doing? We've got to do something with this. That's where, like, you know, my coaches and everybody are like, listen, you get a chance to be a really good pro. Like, let's get serious about this. Let's clean up your diet. Let's learn how to cut weight, right? Let's start doing all the things you got to do to be a high-level pro. Like, you got to be disciplined, you know, and through the board, you know, across the board. So... That's why I feel like martial arts really kind of saved my life and also made me become a better person with everything. The way I look at things are completely different now. Like the way I view doing stuff, jobs, work, anything, like work, your work ethic, like all, all the things that I do is through a lens of martial arts. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty much how I compare everything, how I, you know, how I, I kind of go through like what's the best way to, to, to pursue this, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love to get more into your pro fight and then obviously, you know, how you got into the UFC. But first, let's take a quick break and talk about our sponsors. Hey, there you go. Hey, <laughs> I was getting really good at this. Even Vinny was telling me I'm getting really good at it. So the transitions <laughs> yeah. and then come back. That's good it. timing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So everyone, we want to thank our sponsors for the video. With Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. So the first sponsor we'd like to thank are the BACP Group. This is Alex's business right here. So without Alex, we would not be able to do this video. We really appreciate it, Alex. Guys, if you want to do your own photo shoot, videography shoot, or even have your own podcast, hit up Alex. So Rico, if you want to do any of those things, hit up Alex because he is second to none. All right. Second to none right right. here. Oh, yeah. That's actually something I'm going to be looking to, you know, because... As a pro, like fighting and stuff, they took they, they own the they own my footage. Yeah, some yeah. of the shit I can't the even likeness. get my own footage, there bro. You go. Drives me nuts. There you go. So hit up Alex, my man. He is this guy who's gonna do all these magical things for you. I I'm swear. I'm guy, man. Just let Hell me know. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. It's good to know. We'd also like to thank Nutrimeals. Sometimes, as business owners, we don't have enough time to prep our meals, but we still need to stay on diet. So with Nutrimeals, they take the pain out of prepping the meals because they prep it for you. They can also deliver it, the meals to you, or you can pick them up at one of their many, and I mean many locations throughout, I think, New England at this point, all over New England. They're, I think they're yeah. in New York too as well now. Yeah, they're expanding. So they're, they're really big right now. They're expanding. The owners are great people. They, I mean, they have like gluten-free options. Yeah, anything. Low need. sodium, double protein, so many options, really good food, really good people, really good company. Nutrimeals. Use KMF40 at checkout for 40% off your first order. And if you are a member at KMF Strong, you get 5% off your every order as long as you're a member for life. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, shit. That's that's amazing, guys. Can't beat that. Can't beat that right there. Nutrimeals. Give them a try. You won't regret it. All right. Let's get back into the program. <laughs> All right, Rico. Let's get into when you became pro and then obviously how you got into the UFC. All right, yeah, so <clears throat> as an amateur, so I actually had a really good, I was just getting, um, so like I said, I, I had four or five fights and I started fighting like, you know, top guys around, you know, and the amateur scene and the, the thought process was once we started, you know, taking it serious, like, all right, let's just pump out fights wherever, whoever, try to fight the best guys we can for experience as you go pro. Once you go pro that, you know, that, that record gets swiped. So you go back to zero and zero. So I was lucky enough oh, to have, shit. Does it really? yeah, okay. so like I, I was lucky enough to have like awesome people around me, like the best in the area, period, like the best guys around me. And, you know, I got some sponsors flying me out to like Florida, took down a whole tournament down there. It was awesome, bro. My boy Charles was actually living down there. And uh, so Charles Rosa, that, who I was telling you about, my, my best friend growing up, still is, you know. And um, so he was down in Florida training and I was up here training. We didn't know. We ended up start both starting a career and it's crazy that that took place because for like a year or two, he was like just, you know, solo out there with no phone, nothing, just doing his thing, you know, bettering himself. And he starts to fight, you know, amateur. And I'm doing the same thing up here. And then we, you know, we reconnect after that year. He was like, you know, taking care of himself. He's like, bro, I'm doing jujitsu. Like, I'm about to fight amateur. I'm like, yo, I'm doing Muay Thai. I'm fighting too, bro. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, it's so wild. Like, it was really kind of freaky. So he's down there at one of the best gyms on the planet, which is at, uh, 
American Top Team, yep. Coconut Creek. Well, it used to be. They moved, but, you know, they've been down there forever, that same gym. Um, it's like a fucking Globo gym down there. Yeah. So I was going down there, training with all these guys, like Mike Brown and, and, and Charles and shit, and getting, like, top level, you know, getting kind of, you know, treated just like Charles is, who's a member down there for a long time. So it was like almost like a second home for me for a little bit. So I was fighting in this tournament called Rise of a Warrior, which was really cool. So I'd go down there and I'd fight every probably about like two or three months. So I'd go down there for a couple of weeks, train, get ready for the fight. And if I win, I fight again in a couple months. So I'd stay for a little bit, just keep training with Charles, come home, train up here, go back for the next fight and do it all over again until I got to the title which I, I did and I won. It was awesome. It was like just really, really cool experience because as an amateur, you don't really get those opportunities. Um, I fought in um, Oklahoma too at a, in a casino. It, it was awesome to be like the bad guy. Oh, yeah? like to, I fucking love it, bro. Like, I, like honestly, I'm not going to lie. Some people, it really bothers them flying away from home and fighting and stuff. I feel like it fuels me. I'm better. I'm a, I'm a better. Mm -hmm. I think, you know You're in like their turf and then you come and mess up their guys. I love it. I want people like booing me, yeah, yelling yeah. at me, throwing shit at I fucking love it, dude. Right. Like, I love that. I don't know. I feed off of it for whatever reason. And it's, you know what it is? I think it's because when I have, like, I have a really big <laughs> fan base here. So a lot of my fights that I had here, I'd have like, I'd sell like 300 tickets, something like that. And it's like, fuck, I don't want to let them down. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'd be like almost fighting not to lose rather than to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, don't make a mistake. Yeah. Don't be the yeah. mindset's different. Like, it's like, don't get me wrong. I'm always going to go for the finish. But like there's stuff in between you getting sloppy, maybe overdoing it. Like you get, emo you get too emotional at those times. It's easy to get kind of overwhelmed with the emotion because there's just so much riding on it. Even if it was amateur, it didn't matter. It's a fight. It's a fight. You don't want to lose. You know, I'm not I trying to lose a fight in front of my, my people ever, dude, no matter what. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, you know, so it's this. It's the thing is like even amateur or pro fights, it's all means to say like every fight is the most important fight of your life. It's your next fight. Like the fight. That's why it's not like no more obviously if there's a title involved this that whatever but realistically it's all the same thing you know unless the rules change a little bit but still the mindset's the same but yeah so i, I you know i got a lot of amateur experience and then my son was about to be born so as i went as i won that rise of a warrior tournament i realized i'm having a son all right so now it gets interesting because my pro debut was for bellator which is like the second biggest promotion probably in the yep. world you know what i mean besides the ufc and it was kind of a big step up because it's like all right fuck right to right to bellator like that's how we're doing it all right you know which is awesome because i got the experience as an amateur you know i fought i think 15 16 times as an amateur something around there you know which is a lot, a lot of amateur fights then because um my boy Tateki matsuda who i've trained with forever i met at uh sit your um he didn't even really get the opportunity to fight amateur because they didn't even have it so he like went right into pro so he's been like a pro since like 2006 or 7 or something 2008 Just right into pro right into pro wow yeah so like that's how it works how does that even work though you train you uh you know you get you train and you you say i want a professional fight and you just that's keep, it that's it bro wow. And you fight another pro that's yeah. how it used to work well, it's different because he also like went to brazil to get his I think he got his purple belt in Brazil. He trained in Thailand. Like this kid already oh, wow. was like, he was I met him in the gym. He was living in the gym. Yeah. This kid came from Japan, here on a school visa. Kid was working, training, learning English in the gym, living in the gym. Like uh, best work ethic, illest dude yeah. I ever met. I'm still one of my best friends. I train with him all the time over at Eddie's. He's still he's still over there and he's still at Broadway BJJ. Oh, so he's over there too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he dude, he's Touch. he's the man, dude. This kid's a world of knowledge, bro. You should check him out if you get a chance. Yeah, definitely, man. But, um, yeah, so my son was about to be born. I'm going pro, you know, it's just a lot, you know, but um, fought for, like I said, made my pro debut for Bellator, had the most epic knockout that they won't give me the footage for. It was even, I think, honestly, it's even it's even crazier than the, the Ultimate Fighter knockout. Really? This dude was out in a stretcher, bro. They had to stop the show. It was bad. Like, it was, and this kid had, was solid, so everybody in New England's telling me, like, dude, you got to watch out. This kid's phenomenal ground game, blah, blah, blah. He's already had four pro fights. I think he was three and one. But, like, fought some good guys, like, you know, scrappy kid. And I was like, dude, you know, I'm, I don't care. What the fuck? It's, what, what are you doing? Uh, you know, it's fighting, you know? Right. So I made my pro debut with him, and right off the rip, charged at me, go for a guillotine. Um, I go for the guillotine, fell on my back, now I'm on my back, which is obviously not the best position early on, whatever. You know, stuff some, 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 some ground and pound submissions, get up. And he goes for an armbar. And I remember I pick him up, dump him on the armbar, and he kind of got a little woozy, turns on his back, and I... I come almost, uh, come over the top and start punching from underneath, and the punch is kind of getting him weaker. I can feel him kind of losing a little bit, so I knew like I landed some good shots. He started kind of 
you know, getting a little weaker and he rolls over and I post off his face and just drop elbows like as hard as and fast as I could, bro. And I didn't even realize that he was already like, he was probably knocked out after the second one. I'm just going, like going. And he's, dude, he was out. I'll show you some pictures with like his chin's just like completely just mashed into the camera. Why won't they give you the footage? So I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. We could probably find it on YouTube. Uh, you can't. You can't. You cannot, dude. Trust me. My Put this way. My boy was the only one that had the footage for years. And every time we posted it up, they would take it off. Like, it would get taken off, taken off. What? And I don't have the actual footage because it was streamed. Hmm. It wasn't on the main card. So it was streamed. It was the first fight of the night. And, dude, he was out cold for, like, fucking 15 minutes. They had to stretcher mm -hmm. him out. He never fought again. I've ended, like, a couple careers like that where I knocked the dude out and, like, dude, they ain't fighting no more. Damn. Yeah, like... This is not I, for everyone, huh? It, dude, it's the most fucking... Listen, bro, you can die. Like, yeah. what are you talking about, yeah. dude? Especially once you get pro and you can drop elbows and knees to someone's face, dude. Like, it's very dangerous, dude. That's why, like, that's you have to know what you're getting yourself into. Like, that's why you should be scared. You should be scared of that moment. It's going to keep you sharp. You're going to respect your opponent. You have to be a little scared. It's a balance. Like, I don't get scared now. Like, I get... I get nervous, good nervous, but I know how to harness it better because I've done it so many times. You know what I mean? I probably had 30 fights now, I think. So it's like that learning how to harness that emotion is is everything. You know what I mean? Like turning it into a positive rather than like fighting out of fear because I feel like I used to come out a little angry and like try to use that adrenaline, but you can adrenaline dump. You have to know how to keep it like harnessed, like keep be fucking, you know, real cool with it. Kind of like store it for when you really need it you know what i'm saying you have to know how to harness it it's it's hard to explain but um there's no other feeling like it in the world dude i don't care what anybody says no drug no nothing like you go into a fist fight with somebody that's been specifically training to fight you to beat you learn like watching you specifically like learning everything about you so they can beat you it is there is nothing better than coming on top on, on, on against someone like that because it's like no it's not just a street fight something happens blah 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 no this is a guy that's been planning his the past three months training to specifically beat you so it's like the ultimate competition man what's what's hard you know what i mean what's yeah. more mentally physically emotionally draining than that yeah. besides going to like war you know yeah. and it that's really what it is it's war it really you know? boils down to like the most like pure form of a sport just yeah, it's one the man against another man. Competition, man. Right? Yeah. There's no ball involved. There's no team involved. It's just one on one. Yeah. Just one trying to dominate the well, other. Well, there is a team involved, and it does well, make a difference. But I know is. what you're saying because yeah. I say it all the time. But believe it or not, like your team is is probably the biggest asset you got because like if if you have people around you that been there, done that, and know how to like my coach John Clark awesome MMA coach, crew Mark Delagardi, phenomenal, phenomenal coach. Like these guys have so much knowledge and know how to like, and that's the thing is they know how to coach each person different. Everybody needs specific type of coaching. Yeah. There's guys you got to hold back and be like, listen, and then there's some guys you take them off the fucking chain, let them go. There's some guys that you got to like get in their head mentally about why are they doing this? You know, this, this you got there's some guys you got to like calm down. Some guys you got to slap the shit out and be like, yo, it's time to fucking go. Let's what are you doing? Like, it's time to fight. Like, get them almost pissed off, like emotionally. So you got to like know how to and you got to know how to teach them. Like, the, like crew Mark always told me a long time ago, it's like the best fighters are guys that like the best trainers and fighters. Like you can't change a guy and make him become like one specific style like you can't come to a muay thai gym if you want to do mma and be like use but just muay thai you have to know how they move you utilize what you got from each you know martial art to blend it together to be the best you can like you know like kind of like a mm -hmm. bruce lee you know type of mindset you got to you know become water you have water. to be able to be everything and you have to go off of what you naturally like like what you naturally do like if you move a certain way, I can't turn you into a specific Muay Thai guy. That's why I loved coming from karate and then going to Muay Thai and then going to Jiu-Jitsu and doing that. Because now it's like I use my, sometimes I use a karate range. Sometimes I'll go right into that to boxing, into, you know, a boxing range. Use my kicks to set up punches. Use my punches to set up kicks. Get out. P pretend like you're throwing hands right into takedowns. Like, you, you got to be able to blend it. And I think that's what makes the best guys the best is, like, not they're not so good at, like, one or two things. They know how to blend it well. Unless you got an ultimate elite guy like a Khabib, like someone that's just on another level of a, of a of a specific art, that's like worlds above almost everybody, and that's just super rare. That's like even like that's extremely rare. That's like the like the the, the one in a million, one in a billion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
That's not really. I don't. That makes me think of Kimbo Slice too. He was a lot more of like a boxer, I would say. Well, that's because he grew up street fighting with with just the hands. You know what I mean? But he, dude, he beat fucking Houston Alexander. He had some good fights. Like, mm-hmm. people forget, dude. He was, didn't start MMA till he was, like, probably, like, 40. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's fucking he was crazy, bro. You know, and Ch- I got a cool story about Kimbo. Kimbo gave Charles his first pair of boxing gloves. So they had, a, like, a similar... That's so cool. Yeah, so they were boys down there. And because um, Charles was one of the guys that trained Kimbo when he first started getting MMA. Really? Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Before he went on the Ultimate Fighter? Wow. Yeah, before he got, like, those big fights. Nice. When he was just coming from, like, the street. Because Charles was living in... in in Florida at the yeah, time, yeah. and this is when like Game Bread was, you know, coming in through because he went through the bare knuckle shit yep. too. But he was already fighting. I think he was already doing really well fighting. He already got into MMA. Kimbo was still doing the street thing. <laughs> Yo, That's what uh, some Mike of Tyson that, told some him. of those fights yeah. that he has that you can see on YouTube. Oh, yeah. bro, see that Arley. guy's eye was all Arley. busted up. Yeah, <laughs> but he, you tell you tell he knew how to friggin' punch. Like he yeah, knew, how to, he knew sure. how to move. He was a good bo- yo, good boxing. So going back to you though about like transitioning from that into the well, or into the show or the UFC and all that. Like, where did it go? Yeah, from so there? so pro. I just kept, you know, I, I won my three fights with Bellator. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, that first one was vicious knockout. Had a couple of good fights. One was a no contest, so we took that fight again. And right when that happened, I friggin' almost died, dude. I had my tonsils removed, and then I picked up my kid in the tub, and all the the blood went in my lungs. My mom rushed me to the hospital. I was like, "There's nothing wrong with me." Blah blah. blah. My lungs were filling up with blood. I didn't even realize. Damn. So, like, I almost died during that, and I had, like, literally, she walks in, <laughs> fucking, like, the, I couldn't even say what I wanted, what was happening, because my, everything was, like, um, coagulating. Yeah. So, I sense. couldn't talk. All of a sudden, I can't talk, and I don't know why. I'm like, nothing will come out, because it's all clotting in my lungs and filling up. The fucking doctor grabs me, literally, he's, like, shoving some down my throat. My mom walks in, and I just puke up a pool of blood, dude, oh. like... Like, blah, and a like little golf ball, so, like not a golf ball, a little bit smaller than a golf ball, clot comes out like, blah, and then just blood everywhere. And then I'm like, because I was like fading out, dude. I was literally like, I was fading out. They were like, dude, we took, they pumped so much blood out of my lungs. They don't know how, they were like, I don't know how your lungs didn't collapse. You're lucky, like a couple more minutes, you easily could have died. Might have been the training. I don't know. The, you know, it's another thing too on the, like, the ultimate fighter. I got a lung infection too after that first fight, which was wild because it made had me thinking like that. I was coughing up black stuff, and I'm like, "Oh God, I'm having like flashbacks of, of that." And I was like, "Oh, Jeez. what was that even like being on the Ultimate Fighter?" Oh, it was fucking awesome, bro. It was a great experience. So like, how did you get on it? Yeah, so yeah. so fights keep you know I just keep fighting, whatever. I actually got an opportunity on the on the Contender a couple years back before that. So I think it was like 2018. And I fought Montel Jackson, who's in the UFC right now, on a fucking tear, bro. He's been, yeah, I've been watching him. smoking everybody. Um, and I had a really weird fight against him because I got eye gouged like three or four times, hitting the nuts. I think it had the most penalties in a fight ever. Like, like I'm like not even joking. A lot of weird stuff happened that fight. I think it was mostly too because we, nobody like he said. I watched an interview. He said he felt like really awkward because there's no sound there's no music it's it's very eerie like not yeah. a lot of people there and that's how it was like fighting on the ultimate fighter because you know it's shut off to the world pretty much there's only like select a few people being there and it's in the apex so it's like do you walk out it sounds like you know it's like an execution bro people fucking just like you hear silence dude it's yeah. just like it's wild bro it's a wild and that's what that was a a big thing i feel like i got a major advantage on is like the mindset and understanding like how to come out of the fights because I fought last. So I was the last fight of the entire, uh, of all of the fights. So of all the fights, the fights go off and then I'm the last. So I got to watch a couple fights first and I watched like, just like the energy. Like I watched like how fast they come out, like how fast the rounds are going by. Cause if it only, it only goes two rounds unless it's one to one, then it goes three. So really you got to kind of sprint it's more of a sprint than it is an, a regular fight. You know what I mean? You got to come out fucking hot. You yeah. know what I mean? You can't you can't waste because if you lose two rounds, you just lost. You're not gonna have that third round to, to potentially get it back. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I even getting on the Ultimate Fighter, they actually called me. They asked me to do it. Um, I think it was 2020, and my daughter was about to be born. It was like during COVID. It was like a weird fucking time. I actually turned them down. And they were like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, I had to. I didn't want to be away with my daughter. Do- you know, my daughter being born. I knew that would bother me for the rest of my life, man. And I'm so glad I made that decision because it was probably a really fucking weird time really? to be on that show, dude, during COVID and all that bullshit, that fucking, you know, nonsense that that was. And uh, so I was just working, and um, 
trying to train, but all the gyms were fucking closed down and locked down up in here. You know how it is, dude. Some of yeah. it was a fucking joke. I couldn't even get into my get into the gym over there. They closed it down completely over there. My boy Rob Font was helping me out, fucking like doing like privates with me and like help you know help me you know get back into shape because I had that time off during you know, and uh, we were getting kicked out of gyms and shit because like you know it, it was what it was. Yeah, man. But um, so I get a, I get a couple fights after that. You know, win a fight, whatever. Uh, with uh, Combat FC, which was the main event over there, uh, which uh, they're doing awesome right now. They're actually got uh, something coming up in February. A couple of our guys are fighting on that. I don't know if you guys have been there. It's over in uh, Wilming, Wilmington no. at Shriners. You guys should check it out. It's dope. Oh, it's, good, it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good spot. Good, good fights. Good uh, production. They do everything really well. But um, so I, w- I was the main event for for them, and then I had a title fight scheduled, and then they they hit me up like last minute. About for the Ultimate Fighter, I like my 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 manager Tyson's like, dude, you got at least you know put your name up there, blah blah blah. Like they hit him up. So usually everybody signs up for it, like months in advance when they do it. Like thousands and thousands of people fucking sign up for it. You know what I mean? Like I didn't even fucking think to sign up for it, but they hit me up for it. So I knew, all right, if they're hitting me up for it, then yeah. they want me. Yeah, you know what I mean, they want me on that show for you know, because they why would they hit me up? That doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? So I was like, if I knew since they hit me up, I probably have a good shot at actually getting on because so when you get there and you show up, you don't know if you're actually on the show or not. So you go up there and it's like a tryout. So you go there and you try out. You was in a hotel for like weeks and they got like a bunch of extra guys. So only four people from each weight class. Well, I'm sorry, eight people from each weight class because the teams are yeah, four and four. So eight people from each weight class get on the show. They probably had like 20, they probably had, you know, they had a bunch of extra guys. So they kind of, and some of them were like extra UFC guys, big prospects, you know, guys you would know, you know what I'm saying? And then as the weeks go on of us doing training and then they do interviews and all this shit, people start falling off, falling off, falling off. And then the fucking, the very last day, we don't even know if we're on the show. They're like, somebody will just come to your room and be like, all right, grab your shit, you're going. So like the whole fucking time, you don't even know. So we we locked in our hotel rooms. We didn't have our own key, so you literally only go train when you can, and then you go back in your room. They order you food. It's a really fucking wild experience, bro. It was during COVID. That's why the pandemic. It, well, yeah. no, it's they do that too. For, no, for like this was this was for the the one I just did. But yeah, there was some COVID bullshit going on too. Still, I of think. Course. But I mean, realistically, I think it was it wasn't really because of the COVID. It was more like they want to keep it quiet. They want to make everything. I gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hush, hush. Like think about it. Once you get on the show, did, bef- do they take your phone? You have oh, no I was TV. Just about to say, did they have There's no nothing? Rules, you, can't you can't bring pose. a book. You can't bring books. You can't bring a book. Only book you can bring is a Bible. So I read the Bible a lot in there. You know. The, Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah bro. At least there's that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was good. No, for real, that was like the best thing. You know, because like, you know, especially like as I get older, especially with my kids and stuff. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more into, you know, my religion again and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's good to just have, like, a, a base. like 100%. Especially my kids. I feel like it's really good just, like, 100%. you know, just to have that that moral compass, right, yeah, of, like, yeah. just good and evil. Like, you know, that's what, you know, good, yeah. you know, so. Definitely. But, um, yeah, man, it was fucking wild, dude. A couple of the guys on the show, the cameramen, were, like, from Boston. So it was dope, you know, so I'd, like, slip them notes and be like, yo, what's going on with the Celtics? Who's winning what? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like, he'd be <laughs> fucking, oh, it's hilarious, you know. But, um, yeah, and then. Yeah, that's crazy. And everything, the show was great, dude. Like, for me, it was awesome because, like, I got a lot going on down here. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to train full-time for fights. I'm trying to work, trying to take care of my family, trying to do it all. And it's really, it is a lot. It's a lot, you know what I'm saying? So, like, going there. Actually, this is what kind of gave me a little bit of beef with that dude, Hunter. Like, right before the show, I don't know if you watched the show, we, we kind of, like, almost went at it a little bit at the weigh-ins because he got in my face talking nonsense about, this ain't a vacation for me, boy. And I was like, <laughs> bro, because I, I kept saying that. I was like, dude, this is like a fucking dream come true. This is a vacation. Yeah, I'm yeah. surrounded by the best guys in the world. I'm on Conor McGregor's team. I got his nutritionist, his wrestling coach, so- his fucking striking coach. You know what I mean? I got the... And I don't get a, no distractions. Exactly. You know, I have no distractions. Like, I wake up, I, I, I sleep in in the morning because my training session isn't until later. I wake up, I either hit the sauna or the hot tub or whatever, grab a little bite to eat, get ready for training. I come back, shower, whatever, go back to the hot tub, go back to the sauna, eat a little bit, go back to the gym. It's like, dude, I don't got to fucking worry about nothing. And I can, you have to sleep in and shit. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, for me, it was like a fucking vacation. <laughs> I loved that shit. And it like made me really, you know, I was like, damn, dude, if I feel like... 
you know, not, you know, try, that's why I like outside, like now that I'm back, you know, I try to keep, not be so distracted with everything. Try to keep it simple. Like mm-hmm. what's the main goals that I want to accomplish? Like right now, with, like I'm in, in training camp. I don't even have a fight. I'm in training camp. Like I'm pretty much pretending like I'm in training camp. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I have to be ready for short notice. Of course. You know, the only way that's going to work is if I'm at weight. You know, so it's like that's why like you, I think you mentioned something yeah, about like yeah. going to dinner. Going so I'm yeah. like, ah, yeah, it, I, we could go somewhere. We could get a salad. I was like, yeah, I'll go get a salad. <laughs> you know? I know, I know a good place that's relatively clean. Yeah, but you know, but but I, that's what I'm saying though. My mindset's already there. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, because sure. like I have to be. I have no choice if I want that to be my goal. If I want that yeah. to happen, because there's no way of getting a short notice fight and making weight if I'm not there. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so you're right for that. The commitment has to be that much more. You know. Definitely. Definitely. So how well, how was it on the show? Because I mean, we're pretty big Conor McGregor fans, and I've actually really liked watching The Ultimate Fighter. My favorite season, obviously, is the heavyweight season with Kimbo Slice, yeah, that, yeah, the yeah, best yeah. one of yeah, them yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. I think the, it's wild because this season I feel like could have been so amazing with all the behind the scenes stuff that they didn't show because they didn't have time because it was on ESPN. So like, I think that because it was on ESPN, they only have certain like times. So if you notice the like the way the show went, it was very like. All right, who's fighting? This is their background. It was very like boom, 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 like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there was so, you understand, you're in a house that is filmed 24 hours a day, like with cameras everywhere. And all the all the, the shows were like pretty, you know, cookie cutter kind of like, all right, this is the guy that's fighting. There's a little bit of background on him. This is what he's going through. This is the fight, you know? And dude, we have, they have, I will, I would love to pay money for the, the sh- like the behind the scene footage of us shooting the shit, talking about like all in the hot tub, like fight kid, dude, you're fighting with right here. And like our teams against their team was sitting there, all just sitting there shooting the shit, talking about fights and like inside stuff. That's like just really fucking cool that I think the public would have liked more. They should I, do a behind the scenes type I, of like separate uh, bro. Thing. Our season with- two would be so dope, bro. Cause we're like playing cards, bullshit and talking shit. Some people get beef. Yeah. Like, Oh, it's fucking great, man. Yeah. Like, should. Oh man. Like, it, I, it'd be like I would an ex- pay to have the behind the scene footage of like from us leaving after fights, like rapping in the bus, talking shit, uh, like just being goons through that. like, Fun, fun stuff, dude. Like, like after my fight, you know, obviously it's sponsored by Proper 12 and whatnot, but like everybody on the show is super, you know, professional. This ain't like how it used to be. Guys get hammed and this, that, whatever. Everybody on the show was legit pros. Everybody could be in the UFC. It's all about if they get the opportunity to. Yeah, like everybody yeah. can compete in the UFC. Um, they're all proven fighters. You know what I mean? At high level. It's just about performing that night, man. It's about making, you know, making do what it, you know, when you can. And, uh, you know, there was the one night we, you know, after my fight, you know, we we celebrated and and Lee and me and Lee, the Connor's guy from from uh, from Ireland, we just for whatever reason I just get I just get along with those dudes really well. We got fucking hammered, bro. Like we, <laughs> yeah. like we the one night because those guys already had fights, so they weren't gonna fight again. So me, Carlos, like my teammates, like we fucking lit it up that night, dude. To yeah. the point where like. We st- I fucking stole the cameraman's camera and fucking chased him <laughs> through the house. Like, we got wild, dude. If I could see that, That's but he so blacked funny. out. He blacked the fuck out by the end of the night. So our boy Carlos is like a mixologist. He's a, a, a really good bartender. Okay. So he would like, he was making fucking everybody all types of crazy drinks and shots. And it just fucking, guys have been pent up in the house with no phone, no music. You can't listen to music. You can't listen to music. Damn. Because it, it makes everybody fucking stir crazy. They want you to be a little bit... On edge. They want, they want, they they don't, nothing scripted, but like, let's be real, bro. You're going to get, you know, how many 16 fighters in a fucking house? Someone's going to have fucking They, they really want to yeah. bring, like, the dog out of here. Yeah, you. everybody yeah. was pro, prof- super professional, though. Everybody was there for fucking, you know, for, for, for the job at hand, which is win the fucking yeah. show. Everybody, like, that's all anybody cared about was fucking Boy, getting their uh, hand raised. How long was the show, like, uh, for you guys? <sighs> So we're in a hotel to begin with for a, for a long time, for a couple of weeks before we even know what the fuck's going on, before we even get on it. So we were, I think we were there for around two months total, maybe less, a little bit less. That's maybe. not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay. No, but no phone, no yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, feels you can't like talk to your family. That sucks. You, you know what I mean? At like all. No contact. They gave whatsoever. us the, only the, they gave people that won their first round of like a, a, a fucking 10 minute FaceTime, which is really cool. If you won. If you won, yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh yeah. damn, it was, which was awesome, um, but yeah, dude, it was fucking gnarly. But that's what made me realize, like, a lot of a big part of that show is like my buddy Landon, my my roommate. Like, he grew up on that show a lot. Like, he matured a lot. Like, you, I can see it. Like, he so he's actually signed to the UFC right now. He got a short notice fight. He lost his first fight. Didn't fight again on the show. But you know, he's talented, dude. Got an opportunity. Someone fell out short notice. He was ready. He was at weight. They scooped him up. 
he went three rounds with a dude that had like a lot of UFC fights, you know, a very a good vet. And, you know, he showed he can hang now. He's going to get an opportunity to, for a couple more fights. I think he's got another one coming up soon. But he grew up, like, you know, he, he even, like, would say it out loud. Like, he's, you know, he grew up on that show. That It helped him a lot mentally about, like, maturing and, and doing things, you know. Seeing yourself on camera with certain situations. You're like, oh, uh, uh, you yeah. know, it can be, like. Sure. But he's young, you know what I'm saying? That's the whole point is, like, everybody's growing. He was, I think he's, like, 20, you know, 26, something like that. Like, still, you know. <laughs> So your age, Vinny. My age, yeah, yeah. twenty-seven. But everybody's different, man. You know what I mean? This I know kids that are more mature than me now when they're you know eighteen. You know, everybody's yeah, yeah. everybody's different, different. different. You know what I'm saying? So, so what was um the man himself like? Dude, he was the man, bro. It's it's funny because like Mr. Conor McGregor. Dude, he was the man. Like everybody could, people can say whatever they want, but dude, like he first of all, you know how busy of a guy is, so whatever. He, he any every training session he said he was going to show up at, he showed up at. People like some people trying to make a big deal. He didn't show up at weigh-ins. What do you need him at weigh-ins for? You want him to hold your hand at fucking weigh-ins? What do you need that for? We're fighters, bro. Like, what is what is him showing up at weigh-ins for? You know who I want? I want my nutritionist. The, his nutritionist and the guy that cuts the weight. Tr shout out to Tristan, man. The nutritionist. That's his guy. He's actually gonna help me with my meal plans, like pretty, you know, my 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 meal prep uh, and shit. Because he's dude, he's phenomenal. It's Conor McGregor's nutritionist. You know, he's he's his for a reason. Yeah. He's very good, and he goes through the whole process of cutting weight. You know, what I had to eat all friggin' week it was fucking phenomenal, dude. You know That's what I mean? So it's like, those are the guys I want helping me out for the weight cut and stuff like that. The guys that, you know, that's yeah. their job, dude. That's yeah. what they do. There's that scene that you were driving his Lambo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like? yeah. That was dope. That was fun. Ah oh, man, I was so bummed, though. Cause, like, <laughs> that, that was sick. The thing that was so, so cool about that was, like, so that was, the I think, the day or two after my fight. So I won, whatever. And the cool part about that was, like, it was just so random, whatever. I just look over the Lambo, and I'm like, damn, dude. You know, and I see him walking. I'm like, so when are you going to let me let me go, you know, take a whip in that thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. And uh, we did, and I jump in, and, you know, we go for a ride. And I'm fucking, dude, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm only going to get this opportunity once. I fucking pin that bitch, bro. And he's like, and he was recording, right? So he's like, I'm like, I'm here with the Don Rico. What's up after his knockout? And he's, re like, recording. So I'm like, please save that fucking footage because it's going to take two months, three months before he can air it because he can't, yeah, he can't, yeah. you know, everything's delayed. Yeah. So, like, he can't fucking, you know what I'm saying? He can't uh, post that right, right when it happens. Yeah. Bro, that would have been such an epic moment. Yeah, like he put, cause he's like, he's like, wait, well, I'm here with the Don Rico after his fucking KO. Was, like going nuts doing it. <laughs> and then I hit the gas and he's like, ah, dude, cause I pinned that shit. Like I was like, I know how to drive. You know, I, I've been in some, you know, some decently fast cars and shit and, you know, I just, whatever. But dude, I like downshift cause it's like Triptronic, dude, a fucking yeah. downshift, just yeah. floor it. And bro, he was fucking legit probably, cause we're in a, we were in a parking lot. It's like a mini drag strip, but it's a huge, huge parking lot. The PI is fucking huge. It's like closed off, it's locked off. But still, dude, it's, you know, a parking lot with a lot of cars. It's only like what, 15 feet wide, whatever, you know? Yeah. It's a strip, dude. <laughs> fucking, dude, he's fucking freaking out, bro. Like, we go, you got a good laugh out of it, though. He's playing fucking Biggie and shit. <laughs> it was dope, oh, bro. Yeah. It was fun. Savage, huh? But he's the man. Like, he was really, dude, he hit me. I hit, like, after the show was done, I hit him up a bunch. I'll show you some texts off, like, uh, voicemails off like that. He just helped me with, like, I'm like, all right, what do you think's the best way for me to get, you know, get into the UFC? What do, what do I need to work on? You know, what do you, what do you, what, you know, I'm going to training right now. How should I be focused in the next couple months on training? He's like, listen, nobody wants to touch your back, you know, taste your backhand. Everybody's going to be worried about your hands. Take down defense, take down defense against the cage a thousand times over because that's what people can slow things down and, and, and make it a problem. It's like, and it's usually they use the cage to do it because it's, it's easier to control somebody. You know, out in the open, it's hard to get those open takedowns, especially I, I switch stances a lot. That's why I don't think, like, a lot of these guys understand, like, I'm, you know, it's really hard to take me down in the open. The, the cage is where it's like the high level wrestlers, man, that can like really grind you down. It's like it's like really, and then they can use the cage to make it harder for you to get back up too. So it's like you got to really, you know, really, really know what you're doing there against high level guys. But I mean, dude, he gave me like a lot of really good tips, certain like specific things I don't want to say on here, you know, whatever. Yeah. But like stuff that's that sick, I've been though. working on that he just like, got his works, number like that. You know? and just, that's dope. well, yeah. He hits me up through like Instagram, whatever. And that's fine. He's the fucking man, though. Like he doesn't have to do that. You know, he yeah. doesn't have to go out of his way to like. Yeah, that's it's, cool. it's all done. And when are you gonna fly out there to train with him? Though, I wanted to, man. Like I actually was gonna do it. Like so, the, a lot of the guys that um, you know, like John Cavanaugh, they they runs like uh, SBG, the the gym over there. So actually, my buddy Carlos that was on the show with me, he actually flew out to uh, and trained over there. He said it was awesome. I want to. It's just I got. It's, it's crazy too, cause my family. My mom's from the Azores. She's from um, uh, 
Oh no shit. Santa Maria. So yeah. You're Portuguese. Yeah. Oh, you're Portuguese, Portuguese, Portuguese oh. and Italian. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 No, 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 no. Okay, Portuguese. man. My <laughs> my grandparents are from the Azores too. Oh, real? What island? Uh so grandmother is from San Miguel and my grandfather's from Graciosa. He's from fucking San Miguel. Graci holy shit. Graciosa. Graciosa yeah. is that's meant, yeah. I'm Bandeira, last name. Small world, yeah. man. Yeah, small world. Yeah. That is crazy. So yeah, so you know, it's not too far from Ireland. Yeah. You're, you're you know, right. It's right there. So, you know, I was trying to plan a trip so we go there, you know, check out, because we got a couple houses over there and whatnot, and my, literally my mom grew up there. Yeah. So, and you know that island's tiny. Fuck yeah. Santa is. Maria's tiny, dude. So it's tiny. literally fucking tiny. Oh. And my aunt owns a restaurant over there, Oh Grat. It's like one of the better restaurants. Yeah, yeah. Like fucking, they got that really cool, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of it, that that ocean pool. Yes, that I have. That potion that filters. Yep. That, so her her restaurant is literally right behind, right in front of it. Oh, perfect. So you walk down the stairs to it. Perfect. That's awesome, bro. It's like the, the ocean filters the pool. You know what I mean? Fish jump in there. My son's fishing in the fucking pool. <laughs> it's dope. Really, really cool spot. So I want to go over there. And then I was going to bounce over to Ireland, train with those guys for a while. But it's just it's just tough with everything. I mean, my coach wants to go, Eddie, too, like, because, you know, why not, dude? He's like, dude, let's go down there, train for a little bit. It's just, you know, I got kids. It's a lot. You know what I mean? I got to plan it out. But I still might do it. I might do it. I was hoping to already have a, you know, have a fight lined up now that things are kind of booked with a lot of stuff they say we're going you know for the next couple of months we'll see i'm i'm definitely i got the inv invite with lee and all those guys like lee key and all those guys you know his team they all you know we all have a really good relationship still so like mm -hmm. we still ch you know talk on like um a group chat and this that whatever so i would love to man hell yeah if the, nice. in a perfect world bro i'd already be there you know what i'm saying hell yeah. yeah definitely definitely damn that's dope so now you're getting ready. You're just you're just basically preparing yourself just in case they get that call. Stay yeah. Ready. So like my manager told me, so they did think. Uh, so they do like two. What is it? Uh, you know, they do the the. They're in the summer. The the, the what the hell is it called? The fights that they do every Tuesday. Um, the um, contender series. Yes. So after the contender, he was like, yeah, you know, they're doing the taking care of the contender guys at the summer bowl, blah. He's like, just stay ready for short notices, and which they already proved it's it's happening. Because Landon, like I said, the kid that lost took a short notice fight. He got called in. My buddy Roe, who was on the other team, he got a short notice fight. You know, he's like, he was similar to me. He won his first fight, lost his second fight, but he got an opportunity. And he hit me up. He's like, dude, they gotta give you a chance, man. You fucking, you know what I mean? You're the highlight reel. You laid it all on the line out there, you know, against the yeah. number one guy, and I got the knockout. It's like, how can they not? How can they yeah. deny me? Right. It's like it'd be fucking crazy, bro. Like, what's, you know, did I, yeah. did, did I hook up with someone's sister in the past? Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck did I do? <laughs> can, we talk, can we talk a little bit about the fight really quick about uh, against Hunter? Yeah. yeah. So, because that, that is definitely one of the coolest knockouts and like afterward finish that I've, I've seen someone do it. And I think that's why I got you know, some crazy insight for you guys. Yeah, too, I would love to hear some insights on After it's like it's fucking nuts. I would love to hear it. Oh, yeah. So like you said, you had some beef with them beforehand. Right. At the yeah. So we, we didn't the whole time. Like he's a really like kind of quiet, hard nosed, like to himself type of guy. Like from what I hear, like in the house, he was really quiet. Oh, we, we respect each other. Like we'd sit there and fucking, you know, breakfast or whatever. Sit, like we could have conversations, talk to him about his kids, talk about family. But the closer you get to the fight, shit gets real. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It gets real emotional. It gets real fucking like you start knowing. All right. I'm 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 set to fight him on this day. You know, it starts getting real. You know what I mean? So like sometimes certain shit gets a little starts to get a little chippy. But, like, with us, it wasn't until that day at the weigh-ins. That's why I was so fucking weird, like... And I think some guys need... Um, they need to, like, find uh, something to, like, get them going. You know, like, something like, they, why do I hate... I want to hate this guy. I'm about to fight him. You need to feel that way. Like, for me, I don't... I, once I get in there, I don't even look at people as humans anymore. Like, it's just a thing I gotta, I gotta beat to get to my accomplishment. Like, I literally won't even see that person as a fucking human being. I know it sounds kind of crazy... But you have to. Like, I literally do not see a fucking human being anymore. There's no emotion. There is, it is gone, dude. The only thing is fucking kill or be killed. And if you don't have that mindset, you're doing yourself a disservice, bro. Because that motherfucker's trying to kill you. A hundred percent. Do you going to tell me if he fucking didn't get the opportunity to knock me fucking dead, he would? A hundred percent, bro. Yeah. He tried for the whole time, fucking time. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, that whole fucking time. After I hit him with a couple elbows. And I, I like, so I made the decision, like, early on that fight, like, we got to the fence and I was ripping him with elbows and I felt him get a little limp on, I think, the third or fourth. And I and then I hit him with another one. He kind of surged. And I was like, fuck, I think I woke him back up. <laughs> so, like, that's why I kept going with the elbows because I knew if I kept going with the elbows, I had a chance to knock him out because one of them made him limp. 
but I also knew I was losing position, which I, if, my, if my leg gets a little closer, he's going to fucking get this double leg and he's going to get on top of me. And this motherfucker on top of you is not the guy you want on top of you. You know what I mean? He's very, very heavy, you know, bodied wrestler that knows position very well. But like my coaches were telling me, John Kavanaugh is like, listen, Rico, this kid, it, you know, we fought him before. So he actually cornered, again, I cornered Brad against him because, like I told you, Brad and, and, um, and Hunter fought before in the UFC. So he's like, listen, make it nasty, dude. He doesn't want to get hit. Like, you, you, even if you're on bottom, I know, you, you know, just make it real fucking nasty. Throw elbows from the bottom. Constantly keep hitting them. Survive and keep going. Any chance you get, if you're on the ground, like you, you're not gonna be able to probably get up like traditionally. I know, like this, he's gonna make it a real problem. You could, but it's gonna be hard. It's gonna take a lot of energy. Just like just fucking be nasty. You know what I mean? Like really, just constantly keep hit, putting elbows on him, just hitting him from the. You know, I was trying to hit him to create space to get under to get an underhook to get up. But every time I did, a lot of times like he would shut down this, and it's like one major mistake. I don't want to give up my back. I don't want to. I don't want to put him in position to to get finished so like a lot of times coming up you have to take some shots you know what i mean that's just that's fucking fighting mm -hmm. you know to get, go from a to you know to where you want to be you gotta take a little bit of you know eat some shit sometimes it's just what it is but now we you know good game plan especially like the little like things i worked on with the wrestling coach about defending the single and stuff that that worked because like fights are about adapting right so we knew all right i was like all right now I, after that fight, that round ends. I go to the second round, and they're all like, "Listen, be the sniper. You know what I mean? Be, be a little lower, blah, blah blah. Tell me thing." I'm like, "All right, I don't want this dude getting me to the cage. I'm fucking drop my hands. I'm gonna sit mad low. Now, if he shoots, I'm stuffing. I don't care if he's swinging and hit me in the face. I don't even care because he'll. I'll be be able to counter. So like traditionally, you don't ever tell somebody to drop their fucking hands. But I know my range. You know what I'm saying? Like I already got the range, and I understood." All right, the only way this dude's going to beat me is if he gets me to the cage and he, and he holds me in position, you know what I mean? So, like, from there, now it's all footwork and distance control. And after that second round, bro, I don't think he hit me with one punch. You know, everybody can talk like this, that, whatever. Realistically, he didn't. I don't think he hit me with anything. You know what I mean? He went for a takedown. I stuffed it in the open, you know? He didn't, I didn't let him get me to the cage. Once he got me to the cage and I felt the cage behind me, I hit him with uppercut and then pushed punches on him. Even if I didn't hit, I'm getting away from that cage again. Like, I had better cage awareness. Awareness. So I think, and then right from there, then he realized, okay, he's not letting me, like, settling near the cage. It's going to be hard for him to get those takedowns. And now I stopped peppering a couple of jabs, big some leg kicks, started hitting with some combos. You know, I had a good, like, overhand, uppercut, I think, leg body, uh, body kick that just brought him from one side of the cage all the way to the other. Like, I rushed him, you know what I'm saying? So now we're in a fucking fight. Now it's like, all right, I figured out what you want to do. You kind of, you know, now you got to kind of combat what I'm trying to do. And that now it goes back. Now you're in my realm, though, because now you ain't taking me down. I'm keeping you're keeping it standing. I know my range better than anybody, dude. I know my fucking range like like, you know, like hairline fracture, like hair, you know, very, very minimal, you know, it, centimeters. I know my range. So, yeah, man, it's in a punch. Actually, is something me and Eddie have done a thousand times in the gym. Dude, I work on that head move and parry in the, the top hand as they throw the jab and fucking pull him into that, that cross. So a lot of people didn't even see that. So this is why it makes me realize, like, some people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They just think, oh, this dude just walked in, threw an overhand right and lands it. Dude, like, that shit don't work like that. Like, it really <laughs> it does not work like that. You know, against guys that know what they're doing, like, Hunter's very good. He, like, like, even standing up, like, he moved pretty well. He knows what he's doing. You have to. Those are all little setups. So, like, I had to come in, you know, work off that jab, land in that low kick. Now he's thinking, you know, he's got a, another thing that he's got to think about. And then I switch back from southpaw back to orthodox, which gives me a little bit more of an angle and changes the range a little bit. So now he doesn't realize exactly how close I was. And now he's pumping the jab and he starts to pump it to get his range. And I come over the top. You know what I mean? So it's like something I've been working on for a long time is way more technical than people think it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And, uh, but it, dude, it was awesome because right after they did an interview, I'm like, dude, I fucking was, I could hear my coach from back home in my fucking head, you know, about my boxing. Shout out to Eddie Alvarez, dude, as we worked a lot on that. Like right before the show, we were fucking really, really focusing on like head movement, balance, structure, which Connor actually did too, which was wild. So, like, the way I was training at home before I got on to the show was almost the exact same fucking shit we did when we got there. So, it, like, translated very good. Coach, um, Coach Roddy over there was helped me with the striking. Like big thing, what we're doing was focusing on on posting. If when he shot, to land uppercuts and, and frame to keep him away from the takedown. And it and it's crazy because that's exactly what we, you know. It, it makes sense, obviously. But the way we did it, like translated perfectly. And the way that Connor moves, how he how he we, like 
the way that he says it is a different way. We call it like loading, like, you know, loading the bow and arrow is how he like talks. He, he like, he's really big on that motion. And that's literally what we did. I, I trained at his spot with like blocks. So you put blocks on your feet so you're not losing your balance. Yeah. It keeps you stationary. It makes you have like a lot of power and using torque, you know, using your hips. Kind of like if you watch Canelo, a lot of times when he throws, he's not like lifting his feet or carrying his feet. It's a lot of, it's all grounded, like bang, bang. It's all from the hips yep, and from yeah. the ground. And that's where you get that power. You know what I'm saying? That's why, why do you think Con Connor fucking knocks people dead, bro? With he knows left. how to use his body. Yeah. He knows he turns his punches through. Like a lot of guys are putting a little too much muscle in his arms. It's all about fucking, you know, that, that, that force from the ground to your hip to your hand. That's what generates that power. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, it was cool because it kind of, it worked perfectly. It all blended, you know, it all went right together. Damn, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Shit. That's a, that's a, that was a. Oh, but so listen, so after, this is where it gets fucking nuts, though. So my boy Charles Rosa snuck into the fucking building, dude. But I don't know how he pulled this shit up. The ultimate first? Yes, dude. So listen to this. So the day before, <laughs> he's at the, he was there for his buddy that was fighting in Vegas. And we're, so he's at the PI. That's where we were cutting weight. So he saw me. He's like, my boy's here? What? Because he saw one of my buddies. He's like, dude, Ch Rico's cutting weight right now for the fight tomorrow. He's like, what? So I'm on my last, like, two pounds fucking dying, thinking I'm hallucinating, talking to Charles. I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> fucking dying, dude. Like, last couple pounds. You know what I mean? It's the hardest part. And so uh, he knows I'm going to be fighting tomorrow. So nobody has that information. You know what I mean? The only reason he knew that is because he happened to be at the PI, PI when I'm cutting. So I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know who threw him a shirt. I don't know what. I, I don't know who snuck him in the building because the only people in there sign waivers and shit you know what i mean um and the, whatever not be able to talk and whatnot and um so i'm coming out for my fight and i fucking see charles and i'm like what the fuck is this? like i literally thought i was like hallucinating because he's been to so many of my fights and you know walk out he's like usually the first voice i hear is my best friend you know what i mean so I'm like, dude, you're fucking nuts. I shake my fucking head and I look up and it's funny. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, how do you how do you even get in here? So as the fight goes on, you know, the second round, he's like, Rico, show him who you are screaming at me. Like fucking, you know, they told him, don't say a fucking word. Don't do that. He's like, fuck, this they're going to kick me out now. Like, you know, at this point, he didn't care. The fight was getting crazy. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. From first round to second, he's trying to hype me up. And then I knock him out. And I jump on that kid, dude. And it's like the first person I see was him. I fucking jump. I give him a hug. And like, I know instantly me and him like had that moment because I've talked to him a bunch of times before when thinking the same shit, like all the struggles we went through, his brother's passing, like our buddy Chris Wyman who just passed away. That was like our boy, like just our, our whole like lives kind of like how we got there fucking flashed in front of my eyes, bro. And like, I know he's thinking the same thing. We're like almost crying, hugging, like going fucking nuts. Cause like, that's our journey, bro. Like he's already been in the UFC. I've been grinding to get there. It's like, you know, now he's like already had his run in the ufc and like i'm i'm going so it's just like the story's yeah. fucking wild bro and it's like he was so you don't understand it's like it was so crazy and so emotional and then fucking all of a sudden they start yelling and they start fighting and then all of a sudden like because they're, they're like charles is like they're all talking shit because connor obviously jumps over the cage starts fucking picking me up going nuts. crazy bro. and then yeah. you know and they like he's like hugging me going nuts and they're like he's like shut your filthy mouths you'll do nothing talking all this you'll shit you'll do nothing and, <laughs> yo, and they're like yo and they're fucking they're like yo fuck you all you know all, you know talking yeah. shit to connor and charles is like shut the fuck up let my boy have his moment then it turns into a fucking back and forth banter though and then charles is getting like literally about to fight my boy Ro on the show who I, was, I was really cool with, but them they start going at it. Then they're fucking. Then Connor runs over and fucking smacks one of the dudes in the face and all types of crazy shit. I ain't saying who because I don't want nobody getting in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but fucking shit fucking <laughs> popped off, bro. My boy got like dragged out of there. I don't know why they didn't show any of this, dude. Because oh, bro, I love those. I wonder it was why. Charles got oh, dragged they? the fuck out by yeah. like three security guards. That's crazy. It was insane, dude. And like. It was just absolute fucking chaos, dude. It was, I don't know how, why they didn't use it. I mean, it's weird. That's what the world, what I feel like, mean? wants to see. Yeah. That, that, and like, it was, that. first of all, the fact that Charles snuck his ass in there and that happened, like, that moment for me was probably the best moment. Like, John Kavanaugh was like, dude, that was the craziest fucking thing ever. Like, you don't understand. He was like, he, he knew me, but he didn't know, like, he don't know, like, my heart. Like, Charles knows me. He knows I am going to fucking fight to the death. So he's like, dude, this kid can beat him. Watch. Like, I'm telling you, my boy can knock him out. He can knock out anybody. I, like, Charles knows. I, we've, we've grew up together. He's seen me, you know, in a lot of bad positions and find out ways to knock people fucking out dead, dude. Like, and that's it. There's, like, dead. Like, not TKO. Like, out. You're out. Punches. That's it. One punch. Hit, one hit a quitter, dude. See you later. 
and fucking it was absolute mayhem in there. And they didn't show any of it. Like it blows my fucking yeah. mind, man. It Dude. blows my mind. That's crazy. I feel like everybody would have loved to see that inside oh, yeah. shit. I feel like that's what everybody wants to see. I wonder why. But Maybe ESPN, you know what? I heard ESPN, some shit. Why. Is that why? Yeah, that's, that's why. Yeah. And I heard some shit that they might like start to do, like you said, like maybe just like releasing some random like I think behind the scenes shit. They definitely because should. they gotta edit the shit out of that. They gotta yeah. go through like so much because you understand there's literally hundreds of hours of footage. Of course, they're co- recording twenty four hours a fucking day. Dude. Yeah. Like it's crazy. You they know? have yeah. to do that. With I mean, Spike, it was different. With Spike, it yeah. was Spike is definitely more gritty, but ESPN's more professional. Yeah. I think that is why. But they got way more viewers because probably it was on ESPN. Yeah. You know. So it makes sense. It makes sense. I guess. Yeah, give or take, right? Like, there's a lot of pros and cons, but right. it is yeah. what it is. Hopefully that shit gets released, though, because I would love to That'd see be that. Dude. You got to get all the other footage that to. you haven't gotten. Yeah. yeah. I'm working That's on it. Crazy. I messaged them. I hit them up. But it's like, it's a pain in the ass. Damn. That's why I got to hit him up. Yeah, exactly. Get some, you gotta get, get Alex at your yeah. fights, dude. Get some foot. Not only that, but like yeah. I'm talking about training footage, dude. Alex, got you know what I'm saying? Get, Alex, get some training you. footage, and then we'll maybe like lead it into a fight or something. Because the thing about if I'm fighting with the UFC, you'd have to get credentials to get that. You can build like a trailer to it. But yeah, you can. Yeah. Not only that, you have you know you put together some like a highlight reel of training stuff, and then you can if you have the footage or okay to use that footage, you can blend that in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that'd be dope. There you go. Yeah, Alex got That's you. Perfect. Yeah, hell yeah, hell that'd yeah. Be sick. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. All right. Thank you so much, Rico. That was a great podcast. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We Let could be know. here all day. Yeah, talking. I was going to say, let's, if you guys ever want to do it again, I got plenty of fucking, you know, more things that you know, I'm sure we can discuss if you want. Of course. Uh, um, of course. Yeah, like I said, that was that was fun. That, that's, that shit's fun for me. I like, you know, I love martial arts, man. It's like why I still do it. You know what I mean? Otherwise, if I didn't love it well, so much, why would I be doing it? A quick question then. What would be your, your piece of advice for someone looking to get into mixed martial arts? To the looking to get into it? Yeah. It's just consistency is king, first of all. Second of all, you have to, like, you, everybody wants it like fast food nowadays, right? Everybody wants to just be like, oh, I'm going to come in and train and be a fucking ninja in, 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 in two years. Pro. No, don't work like that. Right. If you want to be good, you got to put the time in. Like, yep. you got you to gotta go through it for years without getting anything. You got to go through it for years and years without receiving a fucking high five for it. You got to do it for your soul, for yourself. Yeah. You can't do it for nobody else. Right. The only way you're going to get benefits out of it is you, if you love it enough to do it for when no one's fucking watching. Exactly. You know? Dude, I think that's perfect. That's also yeah. with um, everything, really. With like, everything. Anything you want to be successful in. Yeah, man, Business. you got to fucking, you got to do it because it's, you know, you have a different, you know, will to want to, 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 to succeed in it for whatever reason. You know what I mean? Definitely. No, I think that's 100% accurate. That's no lie. Go. Definitely, definitely. That's real. All right. Before we end the show, we always like to ask these rapid fire questions for our guests. Go. <laughs> so these are a bit different than our old rapid fire questions. Okay. They're more MMA catered. Okay, you. cool. This is going to be new for me too, though. Yeah, this is going to be new for you. So it's going to be, I'm going to put six questions, six questions on the board. And uh, we're going to go on really quick and just one word answers if you want. If not, you can maybe do a little sentence. Yeah. But I want to get quick, through them quick relatively answer. quick. All right, cool. All right. Are you ready, my friend? Yes, sir. All right. Let's get it. If you could be coached by anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Oof. Dead or alive, coached by anybody. I don't know. I mean,. I have already had so many good coaches. I don't know. Um, fuck. Actually, you know what? He could be a fighter. Uh, you know what? I would do like full time Mike Brown. Mike Brown, the, the uh, yeah, because I've worked with him a little yeah. bit, but I never had like a full like be able to like really pick his brain for a full, okay. full, full my, like like whole camp. Mm-hmm. He's awesome. The way he coaches, bro, he's amazing. Awesome, sweet. Now, speaking about fighters, who is your MMA goat? MMA goat. Um. Damn, bro, Connor's definitely up there, bro. Just what he did was just so amazing, and yeah, I'm not even yeah. saying that because he's yeah. my coach. Like, ah, yeah. oh, dude, no one's ever making that rain again, dude. No one is that has never bro, gonna he's, happen. He literally started that whole like MMA guys into the boxing thing, <laughs> it's like just, to now what it is. For, like, YouTubers if you just watch how he did it, whatever. like how he he made that fucking you know jump to to the to, nobody's doing it like that. Right. He's, no he's got to be up there, but um, I feel like. Oh. Obviously, Anderson Silva was amazing too in his rounds. He's up there too. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's tough. We'll put Anderson Silva. Yeah, McGregor and Silva for sure. Definitely, definitely. All right. So, what is the most superior fighting style in your opinion? 
superior fighting style to, for MMA, just like yep, and probably, probably, so probably wrestling. It's probably yeah, that's wrestling. Why I hear. That's why you usually hear. Yeah, it's got to be like you have to like, and like you obviously you have to be well rounded. You but if you like. If you don't have like solid wrestling, you're fucked. Like you need wrestling. <laughs> like yeah. it's like it's just you, you have to. Definitely, one hundred percent. What's your favorite submission? Peruvian necktie. Yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you uh, put that on someone. Yeah, I actually, I think it was like 2017, like submission of the year or something. Dude, that was a really good submission. But um, I bust it out in the gym all the time, and it's I just love that whole setup from like that that you go back and forth from like. Dar to Anaconda to Peruvian, it's really sneaky. It's, I, I get a lot of high level guys with it. It's really cool, really yeah. cool move. It, it's 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 fucking it works. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> and that's the thing too. It's like that. A lot of times guys know how to defend it, but it goes into other submissions. So it's like that transition to those three mm. is fucking great because it's like you just go back and forth to the next, to the next, to the next. So you're like constantly putting them in threats. I love that spot, dude. Fuck yeah. What's your favorite fight ever? My favorite fight ever. Um, one that I just think of instantly, though, was like Robbie Lawler versus um, Rory, McDonald. Rory McDonald. But that's not my favorite fight ever because I just can't think. But that that's one that pops in that was amazing. Um, that's That one's definitely up there. It's hard to say, dude. Frankie Edgar versus, uh, what's his name? Gray was, Maynard. Was Gray Maynard was fucking nuts. Um, shit. Chuck Liddell's era was amazing. Like oh. Every fucking fight Chuck Liddell was, yeah, was, was awesome. Yeah, the Iceman. It was awesome. Dude, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, and the last question, and the most important question of them all, ass or tits? <laughs> you kept that oh. one. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, it really depends on what you're doing, dude. Variety, <laughs> variety is the spice of life. Come on, man. It depends on what you're doing. I mean, I don't know. It's a good question. It's the Just, most important we'll question. We'll go with tits. Oh, oh wow. that's different. Damn. Okay. The that first is, one. Dude, first my, my girl's Latina. I got. I got. I got everything. Okay, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> He's got everything. Yeah, you're the first person that says tits. <laughs> She's Argentinian Sicilian. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. All right. There you she go. might. She might stab you in your sleep though. But oh, yeah. If you fuck up. So yeah. That's it's, why. Uh, that's it's why. Like I, give or take, right? That's why I'm a. I'm a good man. I don't fucking. You know. The pros and cons. I mean, yeah, with all dude. the fame I, now, you gotta be careful. Oh, yeah, dude. yeah. She don't play. Good. Good. I'm going to show you who the real fighter in the yeah, house is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, for yeah, real. You're afraid of her. You're yeah. Afraid of anybody else, you're afraid of her. Oh, God, don't even get me going. Forget <laughs> ultimate fighter shit. Yeah. It's in your own house. <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rico, for the rapid fire questions and being on the podcast. Do you want to give everyone your social before we. Yeah, so my social stuff's just at, uh, it's, you know, Rico DeShulo, mostly like Instagram and Facebook. So I don't really do too much on Twitter. I don't know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um,. Yeah, I just going to give a quick shout out to like um, Revgear, one of my sponsors. Yeah. Um, my gym, my, my coach is Eddie Alvarez over in um, Alvarez Family Boxing in Salem. You know, Sit Your Tongue, which I've been there forever. Uh, Mark Delgradi and everybody over there. Um, Kyle Bokniak's gym over in North Andover, BJJ, which is um, pretty much a sister school of Broadway BJJ because that's where, you know, our coach um, John Clark is through. So that's a really cool spot that just opened up within this year. He's already killing it. Dude, got some classes over there. Good, like well-roundedness of beginners to people that are fighters to professionals so yeah and that's uh yeah that's pretty much it awesome mcgregor and his team McGregor and his team. yeah, yeah the squad, team mcgregor sure <laughs> absolutely all those guys dude i love all those dudes that that whole squad was so much fun man they those do that that's one thing about like all those irish dudes they get it right they understand to like how the importance of every fight but they know how to like have fun with it and enjoy the process like that's why i feel like i i was so happy to be with on that team because in just their style it suits me perfect like you know i feel like i'm probably one of the only guys on that team or in general unless you're like really not the only but it, that can really benefit from being on connor's team because i know how he moves i can pick up the things that he says some of the guys don't even understand what he was saying some of the times you have to re-break it down mm-hmm. it's like when he's breaking down technique and shit because like i can switch stances i can fight lefty i know how to pull punch like the way i move i can mimic certain things that he does so a lot of stuff that he showed me like with pressure against the cage not resetting in certain places because like in sparring you get into habits of like resetting and stuff and it kind of becomes like a habit you know what I mean? It's like, no, keep that pressure, keep that frame, and like little things that made a big difference that I apply into my sparring now. That's like really made a big difference. So, yeah, shout out to all of them, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate everything that that whole squad did for us. Awesome, dude. 
Thank you for being on, so man. much. Yeah, we that, really that was a blast. It. That was cool. Really Especially, what else are we gonna do? It's a fucking snowstorm. That out is there. true. You got a point. <laughs> Figure it out. That is true. Figure it out. You know? But we're definitely gonna have you on for part two one of these days. Hell yeah! If you, if you get into the UFC, I know it'll be you'll be very busy. But if we could do that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, dude, it's ain't gonna change much, dude. I still fucking train every day. So it's not really gonna change much unless I have to go somewhere for a while to for a fight. But it, even then, I'll be back. It's, it's yeah. not gonna change. Hell yeah. You know, I, 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 what do you? What's the word? You know. Most I'll have to leave for like a you know a week or two for a training camp if it's outside the state or somewhere far. But other than that, I st- my training's here, my camp's here. Yeah, you know what I mean? North so. Shore born, Peabody yeah, born. Yeah. Hell, yeah. hell yeah, we'll be in the area too. Word. We'll, we'll be in Peabody. Yeah, guys, check out that Combat FC card. We we'll definitely will. I'm actually, I do like the commentary for them and shit. So yeah, it's yeah. like I'm kind of working the show, do like you know the in in the fight uh, interviews and stuff after. When's the next one? I want to say February 9th, but they have they'll have some good fights and it's in Wilmington. It's a good it's a good venue. All yeah. the seats are like kind of sit up so everybody has a good view dude yeah dope, dope uh yeah uh hit us up um the details and we'd love to go yeah we'd yeah. love to yeah it's fun love to man love shit. to but all right cool good yes sir thank right, you word. so much and everyone thank you so much for tuning in and until next time see you then yeah.